So remodeling and rehabbing, those are how I usually define it. Remodeling, less value than you put into it. Rehabbing is more value. And you typically have to do that by changing the configuration. I love investors that call me and go, hey, if you see a property on the MLS, I can get for cheap and maybe add a coat of paint and new carpet and then double my money, call me. Uh, no, because if that would happen, guess what? I'd be doing it, you know? Now, you want to buy a property and completely reconfigure the roof with a new bedroom, add on to it, go right ahead. That will change the value. Unless you get a really, really lucky, great purchase, adding paint and a new carpet doesn't really change the value, all right? It may make it a newer, best property, still a three bedroom, two bath, all right? That's what it's going to be comped against. Because you'll notice later when we pull our comps or our comparables, we don't look for stainless steel appliances. We don't look for ceramic tile. None of that stuff pops up on the radar. So who cares that one's got one and one's got the other for evaluation? Doesn't really play a role in it. Now, over on the next page, there are, yes, was there a question? Yeah, I was going to say, like, does adding, like, amenities, like hot tubs, pools, and stuff like that, would that add any, like, value to the house? Um, there is a, over on the next page, there's a principle, there's a term called principle of contribution. I'm on page 313. The principle of contribution says that the sum may be greater than the parts. All right? And that will affect the value. So you add a thing like a deck. That could change it. Um, you add a thing, I'm not going to say pool. Um, I am a level one tax assessor for the state. I can assess properties. Remember the equalization factor we talked about? And I told you, you guys didn't have the education. I do, and I am for the state of Indiana. The funny thing is, when you go out and uh, assess a property to get an assessed value, there's a little column called pool above ground pool in the column there is no positive value addition for an above ground pool that box is actually blacked out you can't even add a number an above ground pool always detracts from value at best it may be zero what about landscape Landscaping could, that is one of the factors. In Indiana, we call it a Q factor. There are 14 points in that equalization. Uh, architecture and design is one of them. Landscaping is one of them. Um, things like that. That can change the assess, the assessed value. And I don't think appraisers actually use landscaping uh, as a comp. All right. We'll get to it in a minute and I'll show you what they really do. OK, but when you assess it, above ground pools never add value. So over on the next page there on 313 is a list of things that will change the value. The first one is called the principle of anticipation. The principle of anticipation says if you buy property and hold it long enough, the value will go up. And we've talked about this under that term called the permanence of investment. I told you land will always be worth more in the future than it is today. That is the principle of anticipation. If you think about some of the overpasses that are around Indianapolis, I grew up in Hancock County in Greenfield, Mount Comfort Exchange or the exit when I was growing up was a two lane road going over the interstate. Now it's four or six lanes, there's McDonald's, there's truck stops, there's gas station. That land is way more valuable than it was 30 years ago through the principle of, an, of anticipation, okay? Which also ties into the principle of change. Things change that will increase the value. How many of you remember when the county line exit wasn't even in existence on I-65? 
it was just an overpass. It changed about 03, 04, eh, maybe not even that. It may have been 96, 97. Wasn't even an exit. There where the Walmart is and all that wasn't. So that would be a principle of change. That farmer that owned that land probably got a pretty penny when they added the exit and then all those buildings started building, okay? The principle of competition. I will challenge any of you to think of two. You may get lucky and think of one, but think of two Wendy's and tell me there's not a McDonald's within a mile of it. I always tend to notice that with CVS and Walgreens. CVS and Walgreens are the same thing. Pizza Hut and Domino's. Wendy's business model literally is to build within a mile of McDonald's. They let McDonald's do all of the work. What's the traffic count? What's the average income? And then they build and Wendy's goes, okay, let's build there. All right, that's their principle of competition because they know at any given time, there are people that are gonna go, oh, I'm hungry, what do you want, McDonald's? Oh, there's a Wendy's, let's go to that instead. CVS and Walgreens. When CVS buys a corner right there on County Line and 135, all three of the other corners value went up because they understand that that property is going to bring in other either competitors or associated uh, businesses. Strip center users, strip center owners love Subway. Subways do the same thing right now. They put a subway in their strip center. That makes all of the other inline properties more valuable because Subway is the number one franchise that people go to eat currently. And while they're going to Subway, oh, look, there's a barbershop next door or a nail salon or an insurance guy. I'll stop and see, get that done while I go to the Subway for lunch. So that kind of thing happens all of the time. Um, you see a farmland, you'll see a sign that says, coming soon, Davis Homes. Within a couple of weeks, the other farm across the street, coming soon. You know, Dura Builders, under the principle of competition, it raises the value of all the property. The principle of conformity. The principle of conformity says the more a property looks like it's supposed to, the more value it get. All right. Now, by a show of thumbs up, how many are South Siders here? South side of Indianapolis. You guys know over there on uh, 31 South, there is a Walmart, uh, an International House of Pancakes, Hooters, uh, Outback, right? All of that right in that area. They are on the east side of the road. What are those structures on the west side of the road? Anybody? Well, they are businesses, but they look like homes. Very good. Are they homes? Well, they look like homes, or, or or are they businesses? Well, the problem is now, because of 31 growing so much, that, that when they were when 31 was created, those were homes. Now they're businesses, but they still look like homes. All right. So the value that they get may not be the same as an office building, like the school sits in a true office building, it looks like an office building. It's three stories, got a glass atrium, it's got a big sign out front, a parking lot. So it looks like what most people would assume an office building should look like. It conforms to our definition. So therefore, the value is probably better than the value of, <coughs> of that structure that looks like a house, but really is a business. Now, the principle of conformity is really weird because it can completely go the other direction. Do you guys know what the Jaeger building is? 
Jaeger are two brothers that started building these and there's like eight of them throughout. There's one on the south side, one up in Noblesville, out in Plainfield. If you can picture Smith Valley Road and 135, it sits just west of 135 on Smith Valley. It's that big building and there's like a yellow pillar and it looks like a dome and it's an all glass front. It's an office building where they lease out uh, office suites to people, all right? The point being is it's very avant-garde looking, very futuristic. It doesn't conform to a true style but the fact is, it is sufficiently unique enough that that style actually creates demand. Another example would be the Stutz uh, office building downtown. Anybody seen the Stutz office building? Used to be a warehouse, now it's an office building. I actually had an office in there for about five years. It was always full and a waiting list because it was very unique. So the conformity can go two different ways. Something can be sufficiently non-conforming that it creates a new style or a desire and have increased rates, all right? Principle of contribution we talked about, this is the sum is greater than the whole or greater than the parts. Adding things could change it. Sometimes adding things might detract above ground pool, I think the book mentions a bowling alley. <laughs> I don't know anybody's got a bowling alley in their house. I'm sure somebody does, but um, that could. There's a term on there called highest and best use. This is probably the number one thing the appraiser looks at when he appraises property. It's the highest and best use. What's the best use for this property? Now, you cannot just carte blanche across the board say, well, commercial's always better. No, that's not true. In the house I'm in, commercial is not better. It is at the end of a dead end street in the woods. The highest and best use for my property is residential. So they do have to take in consideration things like zoning and lot size. You can't just say, oh, well, commercial's worth more. That's not always true. On page 314 is increasing and diminishing returns. This, my friends, is my second favorite story in the whole book, all right? True story, and you know it's a true story when people always go, true story. I listed a house up at 56th in um, Kessler, Pike Township. Two ladies lived in the house. In their front yard, they had 72 lawn ornaments. All right, they had the gazing ball, they had the little mushrooms, they had the little dude, the lady bending over where you could see her bloomers. They used to brag that they never mowed the front lawn. They could just weed whack between everything and take care of it, all right? So on our first week of showing, I get a call from a guy. He said, Raymond, I'm gonna show your property. I'm like, okay, now remember this is dated. I said, okay, I'm gonna leave my fax machine on over the weekend to accept your offer. That was my little cool statement I always thought would work. He said, okay. So Monday I call him, I'm like, hey dude, didn't get an offer. He's like, well, to be honest with you, we pulled into the driveway, saw the front yard, guessed what the house was going to look like and never went in. I'm like, okay. So I go over to the house and I knock on the door. I'm like, hey, Mary, can I come in? She's like, yeah. I said, hey, all of these things in the front yard have to be out of the yard. She's like, but we love them. I get it, but it's too much. And she said, okay. That weekend, I get a call and said, Raymond, we're going to show you property. I said, okay, fax machine's on. Send me an offer. About 25 minutes later, I get a call back from this guy. He's like, Raymond, have you been inside your listing? Now, you know you're in trouble when another agent asks you if you've been inside your own listing. 
He's like, you may want to go talk to your clients. So I go over there, knock on the door, and I'm like, hey, Mary, can I come in? She's like, yeah, come on in. I go in the house, inside of the house, 72 lawn ornaments in the house. The gazing ball was like on the centerpiece of the kitchen table. The mushrooms were by the fireplace. And I'm like, Mary. And she said, well, you told us to take them out of the yard. Uh, you got me on that one, didn't you? I said, it's too much. It's got to go. At some point, too much is too much and can actually reduce the value. I went with them. We went over to Target, bought some of those big storage bins. I literally helped them put this stuff in the storage bins. We labeled them, stuck them in the garage. Next weekend, we got a full price offer, close the house, all right? That is the law of diminishing return. At some point, too much is too much. And this is what I was leading up to when I was talking about rehabbing your kitchen. You get 70 or 80 cents on the dollar, but you just keep doing stuff. At some point, it's gonna start detracting value because too much is too much. I had a buyer, we walked through a house with a buyer. You guys know what a Hummel is? The Hummels, those little figurines that are about this tall, like angels and things like that. This lady must have had, I kid you not, three, four hundred Hummels in her house, everywhere, on the mantelpiece, in the lead, window ledge in her kitchen, on her nightstand. It was way too much. All right. So at some point, too much will start detracting value under the law of diminishing returns, all right?